Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I tried to get all the uh, throat clearing out before I hit live. Hello. Good evening. Uh, welcome, everybody. So I'm doing something a little bit different today. Um, I've been doing these live Q and A's on my channel, um, but I've actually been getting so many questions from you guys, which, which is awesome. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different tonight. I am going to answer a single question, um, but it has a long answer. <laughs> so I'm gonna be answering this in three parts and I'm gonna get, be giving you three tips for setting client expectations. So tonight we're gonna talk about this one uh, topic. So uh, let me jump right into it and tell you what the question is. So this is from one of my students and um, at first she, I, I think she was asking like how do you how do you organize photos? Like what, what do you do if a client wants you to organize photos? Like how would you approach that? Um, but then she sent me an email that was a little more clear. So what she said was the biggest challenge for me is what the client expects of me when I organize their homes. Let's say, for instance, their photos. How do I handle this? Putting photos into albums. Am I expected to put them in order by year? Um, if so, how would I know that? Um, or would I show them how to organize their photos and then um, have them organize their photos on their own as homework? Um, and so this can really translate into lots of different questions about how to organize someone's home. So uh, that is what we are going to be getting into today. How do you manage those expectations from the beginning? So welcome. If you are here on my channel the first time, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Katherine Lawrence and I share simple and practical tools to help professional organizers launch and grow their businesses. So uh, upcoming, you can catch me at NAPO 2021. If you have signed up for the NAPO virtual conference this year, I'll be one of the presenters. I think my session is Thursday morning. You can catch me there or on the replay if you are uh, attending the conference. Um, I'm also a support organizer for a &E's Hoarders this upcoming season, season 12. So um, I'm not sure the date that my episodes will air. However, um, if you're subscribed to my channel or my email list, trust me, you're going to get a lot of information about it because I'm going to try to do a little bit of behind the scenes stuff about the Hoarders TV show Um on my channel. So make sure you have subscribed and also click that little notification button. And then I'm still going to be doing my monthly Q and A's. Uh, those have been kind of hitting the first Thursday of the month. I did one last week. So, but I'm going to be adding in these Q and A's because uh, like I said, you guys are asking a lot of questions. So um, I, I don't mind just popping in here and, and kind of doing a little mini session with you guys. Um, once in a while and to answer those questions. Okay, so the question that we're looking at tonight is um, Carla's had a client call, or this is an example, and the client has said, I want, I, I need my photos organized. What, what can you do for me? So I'm gonna answer this in sort of three parts. So the, the first thing that I see some of you guys doing, because you've, you've messaged me about this and have said, um, you know, this, this is, I think, the mistake that you guys are making. One, you're trying to figure out the answer when you don't have enough information. Okay, so that's sort of mistake number one with setting client expectations. You guys are trying to get all the answers together before you work for the client and get paid. Okay, so that's our, our first mistake. So for example, a client calls and they say, oh my gosh, my, my, organ my photos are a mess, do you organize photos? And so you may say, yeah, of course, I'd love to organize your photos. Great, let's do that. And then 
you get off the phone <laughs> or you know get off the email and you say let me work up a proposal for you let me kind of figure some things out i'll get back in touch with you and you may be doing that because you're just really nervous no one's ever said hey i'm going to give you money to organize my photos right so that may be um, kind of a new thing for you maybe you've organized other things but you haven't organized photos or you just kind of don't know how you would approach that project so you get off the phone or you get off the email and you say i'm going to work up a proposal but guess what now you now you have a little bit of a problem because and as carla was sort of alluding to in her question how are you going to organize photos there are lots of ways to organize photos there are print photos there's digitizing photos there's putting photos into albums and scrapbooks there's you know making art and and other things from photos um, there's there's so many different ways that you could organize photos and if you've gotten off the call with that client or you're trying to figure it out without that client engagement you're gonna really struggle because now you're trying to figure out all of these solutions when you don't really know enough about the problem okay so we're going to talk about how to fix that in um in our next tip so what i think some of you guys might be doing or i've heard from some of my students is that they say okay let me work up a proposal for you and they're going to you know put together this big document that's like okay we could do it this way with photo boxes and you might need I don't know, 10 photo boxes. I'm just making that up because I don't have enough information. And, you know, we're going to do it this way. And, um, or maybe I can do albums. And, you know, this photo box is $3. And this photo box is $20 because it's an archival safe photo box. So now you've put all this work on yourself to kind of come up with all the tons of different ways that you could organize photos. Um, and now you're, you're, you're writing all of that up. And let's say you, you put together a pretty good document and now you've sort of written a term paper on all the ways you could organize photos and all the prices that, you know, it's this long, it'll, it'll cost this much. If I scan them, it'll take cost this much. If I buy an album, it'll do this. So you put together this, this big complicated proposal and you send that to your client and they don't get back in touch with you, right? <laughs> they don't call you, they don't, it's crickets. And so now you're wondering, okay, I just put a couple of hours into creating this huge proposal and now I'm not hearing back from my client. So you're you're at a, a huge disadvantage just for doing it that, that way and you can kind of see where you run into some, some problems there. And again, waiting <laughs> to hear back to find out if your client is gonna book you is, is nerve wracking. And so if you just hear those crickets, what has happened happened is you've lost money because you may have been working a couple of hours and if you went to the house for you know you didn't charge them to go to the house and look at all the photos and do all of this and your time driving there and came back and working in your office you may have put two to four even more hours into this big proposal that you're not getting paid for so the result of that is that you have lost potential wages uh, you're basically working for free and not only that you've overwhelmed the client by giving them too much to think about so maybe they still do want to hire you but they're kind of looking over your proposal and they're trying to figure some things out like do i want the three dollar craft box that can store photos or do i want the twenty dollar archival safe photo box i don't know um you know, should I just scan everything? So you've actually given them so much to think about that the likelihood of um, them hiring you has actually gone down a little bit by giving them so much information. Because you have to remember as professional organizers, we are working with people who are overwhelmed by clutter and they're usually overcommitted in their time. So anytime we give them more work, more things to review, more things to think about, we are putting ourselves in a position to not book that client, okay? So let's always keep that in mind. Um, hey, I see a couple of more people joining in. Um, I, I'm actually hot, which is kind of crazy. It's 80 degrees in my office right now. And I looked at the weather and they said it might snow on Monday. So if you're just joining me or you're joining me live, um, pop pop an emo emoji in the comments and t with explain what your weather is right now with an emoji. And uh, 
and I'll check this out in just a little bit. And if you're watching this on replay, just type replay with an emoji of what type of weather you are experiencing right now. And while I'm thinking about that, let me hop over to our comments. Let me make sure my computer is muted so I don't hear myself. Cool. Awesome. Okay, let's get back to our second tip with setting client expectations. So we want to get more information by conducting a phone interview. Oh, good. Oh, it looks pretty warm for everyone else, too. Well, of course, probably in Texas, mild. Yeah, windy. Windy here in Virginia. A really windy, windy today for some reason. I wish I was out flying a kite or something. Um, okay, so we're going to get more information by conducting a phone interview. Now, this could be a consultation call. This could be a video chat. Um, any, any way you want to, you know, technically do this on Zoom or Hangouts or FaceTime or, or however, but you want to conduct a longer informational interview with your client. So you want to make sure that you are a good fit for the job, that it's an ideal client for you, and that this is a job that you feel comfortable doing with your sort of experience and training. So instead, Let's say, um, okay, so someone calls, they say, I, or you're, you're working with this potential lead and they say, I need help organizing my photos. So you're going to get a little more information about that. So I have sort of three examples of something that you may find out by just asking, um, by conducting that phone interview. So our three examples here. Um, so these are, these are some photo projects that people could say that they need help with. Okay, example number one. I am an artist launching an Instagram account to showcase my work, but I do not know where to store my photos or how to retrieve them quickly. So that is someone who's reaching out to a professional organizer to organize photos. Our second example, my daughter is getting married and I need to create a slideshow of photos at sort of different stages of her life but these photos are scattered throughout the house in so many different locations, boxes, and drawers, I would not know even where to begin to find them. Okay, so that's the struggle for client number two. Client number three tells you during your phone consultation, my 30-year college reunion is coming up. And I thought it'd be fun to bring an album of photos or other keepsakes to the event, okay? So those are some examples of what clients may tell you during a phone interview. Now these are very different problems and they have very different solutions. And they're really asking for different deliverables. So in our first example, our artist on Instagram, um, all of her work is gonna be digital. So she is, there's no, there's no photo, um, there's no physical photo involved. She is taking digital pictures and she needs to be able to find them um, quickly and retrieve them when she needs them for work. So that is her problem that you would find out during a phone consultation. Our second client is probably, I, I like this one because this is a more typical of the work that I'm doing with my clients. There are physical photos, there may be digital photos, and they are scattered on different SD cards. They're in the attic, they're in the garage, they're in drawers. And it's like, how is she going to get these photos together to put together this slideshow. And she's also taking potentially print photos that she has in paper form, and she needs to get them into electronic form to do this slideshow. So we have a, a lot of problems that, that she's gonna need help with. And our third case, um, the 30-year college reunion, they are actually asking for a sample of very specific photos from a very specific timeline, their college years, to be found and organized into a physical form that they can carry with them to an event. So already we're kind of thinking photo boxes, maybe um, do they want us to put the photo album together or are we just helping them you know, pull the, all of those pieces into one place? So 
very different problems that your clients are presenting to you, but they're all photo organizing. And, and this is a case if they said kitchen, paperwork, attic, garage, anything. There's always going to be so many nuances in within like what people need organized. So we have very different problems with very different solutions. So what is our solution to that? Because we can't just blindly say, oh, you need an archival safe photo box, or oh, you need scrapbooking materials, or oh, you need someone to digitize your pictures, or you need um, someone to put together a workflow. So, you know, we can't just blanketly say that to any of these individuals because what they need is so different. Okay. So our third piece of this and how we're, this is really kind of the gold of how we're actually going to book our clients into our uh, paid services is that we are going to ask open-ended questions right from that first contact. So instead of giving them a complicated proposal with estimates and every product under the sun that they could use that we've researched to organize photos. We're not gonna do that. Instead, we're going to ask them open-ended questions. So this is how this could look. Your client, uh, you're on the phone or video chat with them or, or however you're engaging, and the client says, I need help organizing my photos. To which you reply, wonderful, I'd love to help you organize your photos. And then you are gonna say, tell me more. And give them an open-ended question. So an example would be, um, I might say on, on that call, what challenges are you facing right now with getting your photos organized? Okay. Um, why are you seeking help now? Like what, what's going on with right now that you're calling an organizer, not you know a year ago or a year from now? Oh, and I like this one a lot. Have you tried to organize your photos in the past? That one opens, um, you'll get a lot of information back from your, your client on a question like that because they may say, you know, before I had kids, all of my photos were really organized and they're all in boxes, you know, in that guest room closet. So you're thinking, okay, maybe the college photos are in those boxes and this and I'm going to be a very hard job and I'm going to be able to you know do that very quickly and then you know help them with some other solutions um, when you op ask those open-ended questions you're going to get a lot of good information and then I'm going to tell you now kind of how I would sort of close out or book that sale without doing really anything else other than that phone consultation so Let's go back to our three examples of what people said. So like for our first example, we had the artist who wants to use pictures, digital photos for social media, but she doesn't know where to put them. She doesn't know how to retrieve them. She doesn't know how to organize them. Okay. So if you find that out during your question time, you may say to her, and probably what I, I would say, um, I don't I don't do a ton of work like this, so it, it may not be an ideal client for me, but it may be a perfect client for you. Um, but if organizing digital photos and putting digital photos together and sort of offering a cloud storage system or um, cloud backups or helping people with physical backups, um, I believe you could help that first client with a virtual or in-person consultation to create a workflow. And this is probably a one-time consultation with that client, right? So you don't really need to spend hours and hours and hours you know, finding the photos because she's currently creating the photos. So these are photos she created recently. So you're not you know, getting, you're not gonna have to go digging in the attic for the digital photos that she took yesterday. So already you're kind of seeing that the, pr the solution to this problem is, is going to be more consultative. And if this is a niche of yours, you may consider having already like a, a handout on this or like top 10 tips for storing digital photos, or you may want to do a you know, video on YouTube or you know, put something out there, some content that you can refer that client to, and then go ahead and book, um, 
you know, t t for me, I, I feel like this would be like a one hour coach call where you could present a, a workflow, you could get some more information, find out what device she's using and, and s more information. Um, but to me, that feels like the solution would be a consultation. And so I would recommend to her, said, you know, let's do a one hour consultation and I'm going to help you create a workflow. And I'm also going to um, give you a list of all the digital tools you need to organize your photos so that they're easily retrievable and you will have backups of all your photos. Okay, so right then I have booked that client and I have now had this sale. I didn't have to do a big proposal. I didn't have to, you know, go spend a couple hours doing something else or, or researching. I'm just, I'm going to present that to her and I'm going to say, okay, um, I'm going to send you a link. You know, I'm available next Thursday, you know, do mornings work for you, evenings, whatever. And you're going to close that and you're going to get that, that sale right there. Okay, in our set, uh, second example, we had uh, the client who is looking for sort of a lifetime of photos of her daughter because she's getting married and the photos could be anywhere in the house. Okay, so what my solution for that client, and this, this one's definitely in my wheelhouse. I spend time looking for things and, and sort of going through drawers and boxes and closets and under bed in people's homes. So this, this job would excite me pretty uh, this would get me pretty excited and I would say, oh my God, I would love to come over and let's gather all those photos. We're going to get them in chronological order. We're going to set up a staging area so we can, um, you know, start getting them organized. Um, I've got a local person in town who does photo scanning. I'm going to give you their information. Ba, ba, ba. So for me, this is, this is probably a three hour work session in home. And um, I'm going to find plenty of things to keep myself busy during those three hours. Because one, we have to find the photos. We're not really sure where they are. So that, that's a lot of digging and sorting. Um, then we want to put them in chronological order. And then we also want to figure out a way to um, pare them down so that they can be digitized and then put into this PowerPoint uh, for the wedding. So um, I would go ahead and book that as an organizing session and say, okay, you know, it's going to be this much for a session. I think, you know, based on what you're telling me, we, we could make a lot of progress. Hopefully we can find all the photos and, and set our staging area up during that. Um, for me, it would be a three hour session. Of course, if they tell me they have a 1,000 square foot home with eight bedrooms, I may go ahead and try to book two sessions. <laughs> um, but if they tell me they're in a three bedroom, you know, two bathroom house with not a lot of storage, you know, attic, garages, basements, um, I would feel like I could, I could get pretty far with this project in three hours. So that's what I would go ahead and book. Same thing, do mornings or afternoons work for you? How does next Thursday morning, nine o'clock, we'll get started. Go ahead and close out that sale and book that session. Again, no complicated proposals, no unpaid hours, except, you know, of course, the time that you're spending with them there. But that is um, kind of a prerequisite for really booking anyone. You obviously have to talk to them and get some information. Um, and then our third person, uh, this is the one who wants sort of a physical product, a deliverable, like a um, an album, a scrapbook or something put together. So, you know, you want to think to yourself, do I do I do this for clients? There are certainly organizers who create photo albums and scrapbooks and do all of those those types of final deliverables to a client. Um, I personally do not do that. I don't scrapbook for people. Uh, there are people in my community who do, and I can refer that to someone else. But sort of depending on their level of of clutter. Um, if they already know exactly where those photos are, they're like, okay, I just have this one box of photos. I know exactly where it is. It's all my college photos are together. I just need someone to create a, a deliverable for me that is a, a physical scrapbook or album. Maybe that's what you do. Okay. Um, and you're like, this is great. This is an ideal client for me. And you're going to go ahead and, and book that client in however you do that session. Um, our the scrapbookers that I've met in my area, they usually go in and they, they help them select which photos would 
would sort of look good in a book and they talk about design and layout and, and all of that. So whatever you, you do, if that's a one hour or three hour session or however you book it, go ahead and book that right there. Um, and that's, if it's not something you do, like I don't create scrapbooks for people, I would refer that to another organizer. And now I have also built my, um, my local network so I know who the photo organizers are in my community. I've given them a job and guess what? Hopefully they will give me a job that's something more specific in my wheelhouse. Awesome. Okay, great, yeah. Yeah, um, at home with Carla, I'm trying to get past my fears to start a business like yours. Yeah, I mean, I think practice helps with your confidence. I think training, um, there's lots of things you can do to, you know, build up your confidence to, to take that, you know, take that income and feel that you're justified taking that income from people in your, um, in your market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think Annabella Speedfast, lots of Yes, okay, so um, we have a comment here from, I hope it's Annabella, there's only one L, um, and saying she's losing money every time because she gives an, she says an estimate of time, but then you have to worry about how fast you're doing it, then you have to shop and return products. This, this is exactly what I am talking about, and I hope you've caught the whole video. If not, just play the replay. But yes, we do not want to spend time, particularly off the clock, doing all of those extra things, the shopping, the returning, the um, saying we could do it in 10 hours, and then there's all these surprises and we can't do it. So uh, let's review what we've talked about today because I would, I, I would definitely move to a little bit more towards this managing client expectations from the beginning. And then you're not gonna have those problems in the future where you've overcommitted yourself or you're under budget or you know all of these things have happened. So let's review real quick. Um, so every, every client and organizing project is unique. Okay, so keep that in mind that everyone, I mean, you're gonna see a lot of the same patterns. I know I certainly do a lot of the same problems, a lot of the same bad behavior that leads to the problems. Um, but at the end of the day, you really that client is facing a little bit of a unique ch challenge and they all have a unique deadline and, and sort of, you know, timeline, um, I guess that's the same, <laughs> same thing as a deadline, but they all have sort of their own timeline and budget that they are working on. And so, you know, you're just always gonna have to need to get more information about the project. Okay, here we go. Avoid creating complicated solutions, proposals, estimates, because you may lose money and overwhelm your client. Okay, so if you're coming in now, watch the replay of the video because that's what we were talking about here. So to avoid that, we're gonna get as much information from your, from your client to assure that you are a good fit for the job. We're gonna ask open-ended questions and book uh, or plan to book a service or refer that client to another resource during that initial contact, okay? So the initial contact that you have with the client where you're asking these open-ended questions, the result of that should be a paying job. And it's not going to be, the next step is not, let me go work up a big proposal, let me go shopping, let me price products for you, let me go to Target or Container Store, let me sketch it all out. We're not gonna do that off the clock because that's a great way to lose money in your business or not get your business off the ground. And instead, we are going to uh, provide the solutions that we talked about in this video, which is we're going to book a service right after that call, and that's gonna be a paid service. How's that? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me just check over in our comments. And by the way, if you're watching the replay later, which I know most of you guys will be, just put replay and then put your comment or question in the, um, the comments. So I still want you to comment even if we're not here live together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so a question about organizing a commercial office. Yeah, so this is a little bit of a different animal and um, it's really a different sort of offering within the organizing world. So a lot of professional organizers sort of decide if they are going to work in commercial spaces where they need to do proposals to bid on the job or if they're going to work in home environments where they're going to you know, start working on those projects immediately and it's a little bit more like paid for your time and expertise. So completely, completely different animal. Personally, I don't do uh, commercial spaces. I've done a few, but that is not my wheelhouse. So what I would recommend is, um, I don't know if you're a member of NAPO, but you might wanna connect on napo.net. Um, if you're a member there, get in their community and talk to some business organizers, uh, commercial organizers, because it's very much going to be a different um, process. <clears throat> I worked with a friend who had to do a very, very, very complicated proposal because he was scanning papers for the government. And let me tell you, that was <laughs> that business model is like the complete um, is not at all like a home service business model. So think about that and um, and what type of you know industry you're going into. Yeah, yeah, shopping and returning can be done by the client, absolutely. And uh, I prefer that, you know, I prefer that the client does those returns. I don't really have time for all of that. Um, and I, I don't real, honestly feel comfortable charging my full rate. Um, if you have an assistant in your company, you may want to um, have them do returns and shopping and um, you know, of course you want to charge the client for that fee, but I find that it's easier for me to order product after I've uh, worked a few sessions and uh, that's kind of a, a whole, there's a whole video out there, trust me, just, just on that topic because that's a big one as well. Yep. Oh, hi, Sabrina. Yes, um, gather those product ideas on Pinterest, um, put those into your action plan, and then uh, let your client, well, sometimes what I do is I give them a couple of choices. I say, hey, here's a $3 photo box that is not archival safe. It's a little on the cheaper side. It's not gonna last forever. Here's a $20 photo box that is, you know, more archival safe. Which one would you like? And I put both of those options in the uh, action plan for the client. Awesome. Yep. Nope. Yeah, no, I'm not giving, <laughs> I'm not gonna give a lot of estimates. I'm not gonna spend time doing that. I'm gonna give them a link and say, here is uh, the product I recommend. When they click on that link, they're gonna see exactly how much that product is. They are either going to buy that product or they go are going to say, Catherine, you are crazy. I'm not paying $20 for a photo box. And then I'm going to, I would probably have already given them two links. You know, here's the $3 option. Here's the $20 option. Um, yeah, so let your client have a little bit of ownership of that because at the end of the day, the products are gonna be staying at their house. Um, I've had, uh, clients who don't want plastic. I've had clients who only want plastic. I've had clients who want the most expensive products. And I've had clients who want the cheapest, just use a cardboard box you found in my house. And this is really what this whole video is about, is setting those expectations for your client because you need to find, we're not gonna be guessing at this type of thing. We're not gonna be guessing if this is a person who wants the $20 archival box or the $3 craft box or a shoe box to organize your photos. This isn't something that we're, we're guessing at. This is something that is going to be revealed through an interview with your client and asking the right open-ended questions and also, um, getting to know them and their style and their taste, if they're anti-plastic and they have to have everything bamboo or if they don't want any cardboard and they want plastic. This is what you find out by working with your client. So take that pressure off yourself. You're not guessing at all of these things. You're not trying to figure out all of these things before you start getting paid by your client to work. This is what we're learning about during the process. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna close on this question. Um, is it normal to get extra products just in case? I would try to avoid that <laughs> because I don't wanna return them. So um, 
I am going to buy as few products as possible and also try to turn a lot of that over to the client. So if they have to return it, I am not charging them more than probably what it costs to, um, you know, buy the client, uh, buy the product for me to do the return. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that was informative. Um, ba, ba, ba. Let me scroll down on my notes here, see if there's anything else I was going to tell you guys. Um, yeah, so catch me next month at the NAPO virtual conference. Um, hopefully, I, I'll tell you guys when my hoarding sh TV show on A&E, you know, when that's airing or when those episodes are airing. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do that now. And also click the little bell next to it, and that's the best way to get notifications for um, uh, the best way to get notifications for new videos coming out and also stay on my email list and then you can um, find out about upcoming live events. So like and subscribe for more tips on decluttering, downsizing, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.